He's a senior research consultant with the S. Daniel Abraham Center for Middle East Peace, which was <coughs> fabulous work. I want to thank them for helping us put together this panel. Dan is a cartographer. Once again, there is nobody as good as Dan on this issue and with his maps. Um, we're very excited that he's going to be here, uh, and where, that he is here and talking to us today. And I am going to pose a similar question, although slightly uh, different on this, is Dan, is it still possible to carve a border uh, that will enable a contiguous Palestinian state side by side with Israel? Okay, thank you for being here. Can you hear me? Uh, you can look at me, but I prefer if you look at the projection of the slideshow. It's much more dynamic and entertaining. Uh, the question uh, that I've been repeatedly asked around and that, we cons that I consistently focus on is fundamentally can a border between Israel and the future state of Palestine be drawn in a way that satisfies the tension between the two sides, Palestinians' uh, position that it would be based on the 1967 lines and the Israeli interest that it would include within the new borders of Israel the vast majority of uh, Israeli settlers in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Uh, to better answer it, uh, and our answer is yes, there's a mechanism, uh, land swaps. Let's look a little bit at what land swaps are. Uh, obviously, this is not a real picture of settlements, it's uh, just a diagram, uh, but help to explain. If the green line, the 1967 line, right now to the east of it, you can see Israeli settlement um, and a Palestinian village, if you would. The idea is that the line will be modified to include an Israeli settlement within the borders of Israel, and in return, lands right here. Um, from within Israel proper, Israel proper would be transferred back into the new Palestinian state. This is very briefly the concept of uh, land swaps. Uh, maybe a couple of things that are uh, important to mention and to highlight. Uh, obviously, or the purpose of land swaps is that it will allow Israel to include, like I said, the vast majority of settlers, not settlements, and Yariv did a good job of laying those out in the West Bank and East Jerusalem within the new borders and for the Palestinians it will allow them uh, the creation of a, a contiguous and viable by the Palestinian state over the equivalent of 100% of lands lost in 1967. Um, let's look at the map and I'll repeat a little bit of what uh, Yarif has uh, demonstrated but maybe with a closer focus on the possibility uh, of borders. Um, as far as the Israeli considerations, we're looking at here at lands that would be annexed to Israel from the West Bank. There's a different slideshow that deals with lands from Israel proper that would be swapped in return. But uh, the focus of this panel is settlements, so we'll focus on areas from within the West Bank. So uh, incorporate obviously the majority of settlers to Israel. Uh, as far as the Palestinians, those areas would need to be adjacent to the 67 lines without any Palestinian population, minimal in extent, and not impede uh, on contiguity or other daily lives of the Palestinians. Um, the question is, is it possible? And uh, like you saw uh, when you presented, while the majority of the settlements are spread throughout the West Bank, the vast majority of settlers are in areas that are relatively close in geographic proximity to the 1967 line. Um, and the slideshow highlights now the main ones, you saw it on your presentation as well. In today's number, these are the recent figures from uh, the Israeli Central Bureau of Stats. Roughly, in the, in, in the white circles that you see here, all in relative close proximity to the 1967 lines, and, and provided that the area of Greater Jerusalem, right here in the center, is extremely problematic, Danny would be the best one to, to, um, to describe that in real terms, but still, it, it, it geographically close to the 67 line, almost 400,000 Israeli settlers can remain in place. This leaves roughly 130,000 areas that are beyond the ones that are circled in white here. It means that 75% of Israeli presence east of the 1967 line can probably be accommodated in the context of borders. 
Um, if we compare the Israeli proposal, the last Israeli proposal for, for final voters, uh, part of the Annapolis process in, 19, uh, in sorry, 2008 under Prime Minister Omer, compare it with a counteroffer from the Palestinians in the same round of negotiation. I have a slide here that does the comparison better. Uh, let me look here. Okay. The, in territorial terms, the difference between the Israeli proposal and the Palestinian proposal, which you can see here, uh, Israeli proposal on the left and Palestinian proposal on the right, in territorial terms, we're roughly speaking about difference between six, equivalent of 6% uh, area annexed from uh, the West Bank under the Israeli proposal, and roughly 2% by the Israeli proposal, by the, I'm sorry, the Palestinian proposal. In terms of settlers, however, the Israeli proposal leave roughly 70,000 Israeli settlers for evacuation. The Palestinian proposal leaves roughly 190,000 Israeli settlers for evacuation. But in any case, wherever you, whatever your preference is, and if an agreement is reached, it's probably going to fall somewhere in between these two. The fact remains that the vast majority of settlers remain in place, even according to the Palestinian um, proposal. For roughly 60 percent, a little bit over 60 percent of the settlers remain in place. Uh, over the years, there have been all kinds of, of uh, you know, sort of bridging proposals by civil society initiatives. Uh, I'll highlight two: the Geneva Initiative that you can see here leaves roughly 140,000 Israeli settlers for evacuation, which is a large number, uh, no doubt, but definitely, like Yariv said, not undoable. Um, another uh, uh, initiative uh, brought forth by the Baker Institute in 2010, so a little bit of different in, in geographic numbers and also the demographic numbers, but we're down to roughly 120 or even 115,000 settlers that would need to be evacuated. Bottom line, uh, it is my assessment, as well as anybody who reads the map and reads the numbers, is that the ability to carve out uh, a border between the sides uh, is still viable. It's not easy, it's getting harder, uh, but it is still possible.